guys. Welcome to Andrea Loves Everybody. I'm your host, Andrea Gazetta. And with us today, we have... Katia Saad. Yay! Yay! Um, we like to start this podcast out. I like to tell each guest something that I love about them. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think I saw... We were talking about it earlier. I saw you do comedy when you were like one or two months in at Wino Vino. And I just love how much you've grown as a comic. Oh, you thanks. are so funny now. Like, it's really cool to watch you go up. You just have kind of a natural quirky energy on stage that is just very much you and you kind of I think you've definitely found a unique voice when you Thank do comedy you, yeah. so it's just so cool to watch yeah and I'm really really excited to see what more cool shit you do yeah thanks yeah um it's been cool so you also have a podcast called it's called lost it and it's about your virginity story uh because mine is like very specific and embarrassing because I lost it when I was like 24 to the boyfriend I have now Oh, so, and we lost it in the recording studio that we record people in. <laughs> oh, man. But I don't like we lost it, like not where everyone sits. People kind of freak out. They're like, did you lose it? Am I sitting in cum? And I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not where it that's not where it happened. You know, and we definitely don't have that couch anymore. So everything's fine. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. So you said you kind of you lost your virginity at kind of a late ish later yeah. age. Um, can you kind of tell a story about like was losing your virginity later a specific choice? Oh or? my god, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it wasn't a choice. Uh I was like a female incel, but not hateful, I don't think. Uh I no, I was raised insanely Catholic. Like not Hey, me too. Yeah, <laughs> but not like hateful. You know, we didn't hate anybody. Yeah, it just like, like uh, don't have sex. If you come, you'll die. So yeah, don't. yeah, don't. <laughs> it was weird. My mom would be very like, you get like j mostly to me and my sister. Like she didn't seem to give a fuck about my brother having sex, which was irritating. But like um, but sexism. He, he apparently wasn't having sex. I found out later. But uh, just coke. But he. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Yep. So <laughs> Sorry. much worse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but um, but he. Uh, yeah, so she would be like, you're not having it. She really put, like, sex and relationships, like, romantic relationships kind of, like, not important. Like, what's important is, like, getting yourself together was, like, her whole deal. Okay. That's not horrible advice. It's not horrible, but, like, she just, like, she had amazing ideas, but just horrible tactics. Like, my sister started dating in high school, and she was, like, so mean to the boyfriend which was awful because that was she was a really sweet little boy. So like just like kind of crazy like that. But uh, so, yeah, I wasn't interested in dating anyone particularly. I was like, I do theater and this is what I do, you know, and I was like all about it. Um, and then when I got to college, I was like, now I'm definitely it's time to fuck, you know. Yeah, get I'm it in. in college. But I went to Emerson College. And there's a saying at Emerson, which is gay by May or your money back. So there was like <laughs> what? nobody there to fuck because everyone Because it's an art school? Yeah. Apparently, I found out later, there's a lot of like film people out here who like work in like camera. I don't know what they do, but they're like film, not actors. And they're all straight, but I didn't, I couldn't find them. I was yeah. like lost in a sea of actors. Uh, <laughs> there was like one straight guy and you had to like catch him before he started drinking. It's like really <laughs> hard. Like... <laughs> But he turned out to be straight Tish. Like, he actually was, he was, like, I don't know. You had to catch him before he started drinking. And he really started drinking. Like, you had to be like, no, do you remember me? You know, like, so <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Uh, and then there were, like, other straight actors. Don't fuck actors, people, is what I'm saying. Um it's, so yeah, it they'd rather be fucking a mirror half the time. They anyway, really, so. honestly, that is really what they want. Yeah. yeah. So I was, uh, I was have you ever met to be a virgin? Yeah. Have you ever met a gay couple where they look alike? They look so much alike, and it, it's. I had some friends, and for a minute, he dated this dude, and he looked just like him, and I was like, dude. I find that you with, are fucking yourself with men more than like women. Couples. Yes. Yes. I haven't seen it a lot, but I find it when I did men. But even the men, the I do find that. Oh, well, there was this one like couple I knew. They were both women and I found their personalities to be the same. That's interesting. And they admitted that. And they're like, yeah, 
No, I don't. They were. They said a word for it. But they were just becoming the Borg, like turning into one person. Yeah, they were just like we're full of ourselves, and they'd kiss. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cute. It was cute. Yeah, it's <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it wasn't until I got to L.A. and caught an eating disorder that I got Yikes. attention and attention. I got my first sexual experience really was with an actor. What? Okay, yeah. you had an eating disorder. What happened? Were, um, you, were you bigger than you are now? Yeah, in college I was like probably like I had to at least be 15, 20 pounds heavier in college. That's not yeah, big. It, it felt big. <laughs> I don't know. It And also, you know, they're not even very straight, so they're going after the hotter me. I don't know. It was <laughs> like I felt huge, and I definitely lost. I put on weight like I've recovered from it. So I feel like I'm at like a healthy size now. But like yeah. when I first was here, it was like people would be like, I'm worried I'm going to break you. Like because I was like bone. Like, oh, what? Yeah. I've seen people like that. And it, I'm like, who put you in a concentration camp? Who like, put are you, you okay? did this to you? I did it to myself. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I actually moved to L.A. because I studied theater at Emerson. And then uh, how old were you when you moved here then? Like 22? I just turned 23 when 23? I moved. Okay. Yeah. And I I did theater and I was like, this is my life. And then I went to the South and was in this play uh, called Unto These Hills. And you tell the story of the Trail of Tears. And we like lived on a reservation and we would, it was amazing. It was like the best summer ever. Cause it's like you and like all these kids who kind of like are brown and look like you. And they're like, and you drink every night. Are you it Native was fantastic. American? No, they would ship in Latinos to play natives along with actual native people. Interesting. In the play. Interesting. And also like white people too. But so it was like all these like kind of na- like Latino kids. We had some Filipino kids and we would just be there all summer like drinking. But again, they're all gay too. So no sex there. And then, um, so I was like, had this great summer under my belt of like acting only for a living. I was like, I'm going to go to L.A. and smash it. And I moved out here with a theater troupe. And that went horrible. What? Horrible. horrible like you horrible. lived with theater kids? They, they they weren't kids. They were adults. Uh, they were one was they weren't that much older. I was 23. One was 25. And the other was like in her 30s. And they were like the thing about theater people that I that like they like really think they're going to change the world and they kind of build this savior complex around themselves. Uh, I went to art school. So very similar. Yeah. My best friend and I, when I was in art school, when I was a sophomore, my best friend and I, she stopped speaking to me and stopped being my best friend because I told her that I didn't think that art could change the world. Yeah. And she, she stopped speaking to me because that's like her religion. Wow. And I was like, Okay, well, this whole thing is incredibly masturbatory and right. self, you know, uplifting. Right. You know, it it's really just like is like it can it can have an effect on someone. Yeah, but you can, it can help you connect with people, yeah. which I think is positive, and I think it is important. But yeah. to say that like it's the thing that's changing the world is like okay, it's a little grandiose. You need yeah. to relax. It can help put change in motion, but really, totally. what will changes legislation and voting um but Yay. like things like that but um no the, they were like all this theater troupe was like it's like a whole thing they were there for a festival i was supposed to help them administratively and i thought i'd be acting with them and then it turns out we like long story short we hated each other both ends hated each other cool we're very good to each other and then i tried to quit but then it was like you're fired and then uh and then it was like they were connected to all the theater people in LA. So I felt ostracized from like a community I thought I was like I a had part worked, of. Yeah, yeah. I had worked so I hard totally to be get a that. part of. So I was like, I felt like marooned in LA. And I like also felt like I wasn't going to do theater anymore because I realized there was like no living in it whatsoever. Like, I don't know what I thought. Unlike I comedy. <laughs> Unlike comedy. The thing about, well, that's a whole different conversation. But theater, I feel like it's like, you're rather like doing it in your community or you're like Hamilton or your regional theater. But even then you're like jumping around. There just wasn't any way that I thought I wanted to do it that worked. And I really, 
that 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 troupe painted a picture of theater in like working life that I was like, I don't want any part of this. Yeah, like they're they're mean to uh, the people they work with. They say they're about changing the world, but they're really not. They're just about themselves and like putting on the best play, which. Mm, Mm, whatever so. yeah. yeah it's a play yeah 10 people and maybe some friends are gonna come like it's right fine. so i felt so that's why i had this breakdown because i was like i had this like i don't know who i am anymore identity issue and how old were you when that happened 23 yeah and then how soon after that did, so did you like move out and find a new place to stay i i was living with my sister during that time okay and so I had always been living with her during that time. She had to like, she watched that whole thing happen. Cause I, I felt like we had me and this, that troop kind of had this fight. And then it was like, all of a sudden I realized I was like, wait, I fucked all this up. And then I like stopped eating basically. So you kind of had a nervous breakdown yeah, slash that's exactly eating what disorder. It was. Yeah, that's, it was. That's what happened to me before too, where it's just like, I just get really sad and I don't want to eat. And then yeah. you lose five pounds and you're like, I look pretty good, but also sadness. Like people be like, "This happened to me." Someone I broke up with my uh, fiance at the time, yeah. and then I lost like ten pounds, and all my coworkers like, "Andrea, your face looks exactly. better. What is it?" And Everyone's I'm like, "Sadness. Like, yeah. I lost the will to eat. What no, do you want exactly. from me?" Yeah, <laughs> it was very hard to explain. I was embarrassed by how I looked because it wasn't like I had worked out and like, yeah. set a goal and you just didn't. It. You were sad. It's like I failed on every level. And I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> I wake up in the mirror and scream, who are you? And, uh, but, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it's very similar. Even my parents were like, you look really great. Whatever's going on. Did you, I have a question when you, so you kind of became a new person. Like in some yeah. ways you died. Like exactly. a piece That's how of I felt. Yeah. this old person died and you became this new person. Did you always go by Kadi or did your yeah, name always. change? Okay, cool. Always. Kadi is, uh, it's like, I just started writing about it because I, Kadi is like a rolled R, mm -hmm. but like for people who don't roll their R's to say it. Hey. That's like, I, I can't even roll my R. I'm so white. But I'm my so mom sorry. does. I'm, me too. My mom <laughs> does it and she would get so mad at me when I was a little kid about people, not, people call me Karina or Kari. She would get so mad about it. So... We moved in Arizona. I would let people call me Karina. Uh -huh. And then when I moved to NorCal, I had everyone call me Cotty. And then when I went to college, Cotty. And then LA. And just really this whole, it's all because of Facebook. I still get called Karina. I need to fix yeah, it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's really my laziness. <laughs> no, it's yeah. really cool. So I kind of want to move back to how did you meet the dude that you lost your virginity to slash your boyfriend? And did you guys date the whole time? Yeah. So, so like I was in LA and I had this mental breakdown and then I was like, fuck, I need a job. And, um, I kind of, there was kind of like a journey of dating trash, like very, As you brief, do. very briefly trash dating. It's pretty much par for the course. And I feel like in LA, there's just a lot more trash there's about so much trash. Yeah. Uh, and like being, I noticed being thin attracted more trash if anything yay yeah so um so it was kind of like moving through the trash and uh i had gotten a job at kitchen 24 in hollywood and that kind of and i had i had neurofeedback if anybody wants to know about that that really helped my mental breakdown what's neurofeedback neurofeedback it sounds crazy but it really worked for me i, I don't know if it works for everyone it's like they put these like transmitters on your head it's a non-invasive treatment and mm -hmm. basically a nervous brain or pts let's say a ptsd brain or something yeah. who suffered that works like this and a healthy brain works like this oh so instead so, of so you can't see because hand motions on podcasts don't transfer yeah. well but she when she said nervous brain she kind of did like a wavy, like a wavy sideways and then, and a, then a healthy brain healthy brain straight. Just straight line from here to there i have no that, that's just like an example. I don't know if that's like exactly how those brains work. But science. Science, yeah. <laughs> so it basically trains your brain to function healthy, like when you were first born and stuff. Oh, so it kind of rewires yeah. the anxiety. Exactly. Did, did they like walk you through specific scenarios and then like calm you or comfort you in any way? Or no. is it literally, is it completely physical? It's pretty physical. Okay. I needed that at that point. I had tried so much to do it by myself to get over anxiety because I had anxiety growing up. Like when I was a teenager. A oh lot yeah. Of mine was attacks. wicked. Yeah. Horrible. Wicked. So I had tried yoga. I had tried all, all that stuff and it really felt like out of my hands at that point. For me, uh, I did mushrooms. 
and that it helped? helped so much. I had so I had panic attack on mushrooms, and then uh, something happened. It changed my brain, and I I haven't figured it out yet. But a lot of like the anxiety, a lot of the extreme emotions that I have about things, I just don't. My emotions aren't as extreme anymore. Yeah, I feel like I am much more of I. My emotions don't aren't in charge anymore. Like, yes, I'm in charge. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just like okay. I'll deal with this now. Right. Yeah. And then you, you can compartmentalize. It out. Totally. Totally. It's like you can totally step back and be like, oh, this is this is this. OK. Instead of it's like this is this. And like it controls you. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. Well, this the thing happened when I did them is I was outside my body. And then I was like, oh, my body doesn't belong to me. Cool. Then I don't have to deal with all this. Dun- like right. all these things that happen to my body. Oh. I don't have to deal with all those things all yeah. the time. So it's like, ah. Yeah, it's just a brain shift. It, it feels just, yeah good. Yeah, it's can it's weird for my creativity though because I don't feel emotions as extremely, which is where a lot of my creative impulses come right. from. Um, so I'm creating things in a different way. Yeah. So sometimes when I think back of like having panic attacks, I wonder if I was a better actor then because of all that pain and anguish. But I feel like I'm more, much more productive now. Like, oh, yeah. Way, I'm so much more. more yeah. I can like focus on a yeah. thing and do the thing. I can read, you know. <laughs> 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 Did you know that panic attacks uh, cause dyslexia? Interesting. They, uh, you know, I, but I would, I would be so nervous. I like, I was like, I can't absorb any information and like all this, all that stuff. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's so true, though. It's like when your yeah. brain's preoccupied, you're not actually absorbing in content. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's really interesting. So you met your boyfriend. You're working at Kitchen 24. I was working at Kitchen 24. I had done neurofeedback and I felt like, and the, the thing I liked most when I met my boyfriend is that. I was, like, kind of dating around and, like, having fun. But I was in a place, even though I I hadn't started comedy yet, and I didn't know about what I was going to do about acting. I knew I wanted to get back to it. But I was like, I'm happy. That's good. Even though, this, like, from an outside point of view, this might look like a shitty existence. But, like, I I make my own money. I make pretty all right money. I have an apartment. And... I'm having like I'm around friends again. Something I found, too, that helped with like the anxiety is I do this thing. I kind of imagine it like you're on a really narrow strip of land and and on either side is an ocean. Yeah. And one ocean is the past and one ocean is the future. Yeah. And if I worry about falling into the ocean, then it's scary. Like, oh, no, I worry about all these things. But if I just kind of stay in that middle, like, I feel really good. Right. Focus on the now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm happy today. I'm so happy today. Yeah. So, yeah, I try to do that. And that helps a lot, too. (laughs) Me, too. Yeah. I feel like, uh, and they talk about this in The Secret or whatever, but just, like, the being happy now, like, is a big shortcut to whatever you're trying to do. Like, yeah. you're just going to get so much done. Well, and then you get all these things done because you're not, like, worried about yeah. what would happen if this happens. I'm like, well, I enjoy this. I think I'm going to keep doing this. Right. And it's going very well. So I'll just do that. Also, people are, like, attracted to you because they're like, wow, this person is happy. You know? <laughs> they're, like, not annoying. <laughs> much more around. fun to be around. Yeah, yeah totally. And someone freaking out in the corner all the time. Yeah. About an existential crisis about really nothing. Really, it's yeah. fine. It's really, <laughs> it's fine. really yeah. fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was like happy and like living my life. Uh, and he I had a friend in town. Her her name's Issa. She's pretty cool. Um, and our, she like she we're friends. And every time she comes into my life, I feel like something magical happens. Ooh. So she's like, your spirit guy or whatever right, yeah, like kind of magic friend magic friend that's yeah. funny and so I was like Issa's here something magical happened and I was hoping it'd be about a boy personally uh, <laughs> but I personally actually at that time I was talking to this guy who worked around the corner for me and he was like really cute and stuff uh, but he would never ask me out we would have these cool conversations on the street we'd see each other a lot he never asked me out it turned out he was really um, obsessed with the Illuminati so it's really good cool no wonder he was so talkative well yeah (laughs) that's like a whole thing so I thought her she would help me get that guy I was focused on him that's really funny and then one night we were at kitchen because Mark uh, was a regular there now he doesn't like to go in anymore Mark was a regular there and I was there with Issa at the bar when we were just like having drinks talking to people 
And uh, he said that's when he first really saw me was at the bar on my night off. Like he had seen me around the restaurant working. But you're working. So yeah. you're a different person when yeah. you're working. Yeah. And he was like, you were in, you were doing your thing and laughing. And he was like, and he said that a trick he learned about women is not to talk to the girl you want to talk to, actually, but talk to her friends and I guess like prove you're cool or something. Yeah. So he was talking to Issa. At, like, not, like, sexually, just, like, talking to her. Yeah. And I remember I saw him, because when I first saw him, like, a few months, when I, when I started working there, I saw him. I remember I felt like, oh, I'm supposed to talk to this person, was, like, my first impulse. I was like, I'm supposed to know him. I'm supposed to talk to him. He, had, he has this very, like, warm presence. So every time I'd see him, I'd be like, hi, like, expecting we'd talk, but it was always, like, he was going to the bar, and I had to stay at the host stand. So I was like, oh, she's talking to the guy who comes in all the time. And at the time, at the bar, I was helping this guy who had just moved to L.A. It wasn't, again, not sexual. I was just like, you're going to be okay. It's rrr. So I was busy helping Pet this talk. stranger person. Yeah. And then a week later, he came in, uh, and I had just started serving. They promoted me to server, and I was freaking out about not having people at my table and not getting tips. And I was like, do you want to come sit at my table? And he was like, uh, no. <laughs> he was like, but we should go out sometime when you're not working. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and I was so flattered. I was like, okay. And I went and like told everyone at the restaurant <laughs> and I forgot to give him my number. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Tony, Tony, guess what happened? <laughs> I was like so excited. That's really cute. And then he had to come up later and be like, so what's your number? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cute. Yeah. I was so flattered. That's really funny. Yeah. And then it was kind of we he invited me over to his recording studio and then is we, he an a musician? He's a producer. So he does like he does stuff like this. He does ADR for movies. He okay. produces music. He's a guitarist. He's like a one-stop shop. Nice. I dig yeah. it. I'm a big fan of one-stop shop boyfriends. He's a great big yes. fan. And so um we both cuz I was a virgin um, so I was really like, oh, thanks, you know, um, and he had just come out of this kind of crazy relationship where he got cheated on, basically. Mm. And uh, and he was kind of hooking up with people and feeling like empty by it, I guess. So on our like third, we went to go see the movie The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway. Yes. It was like hysterical. <laughs> it's not supposed to be, but it was to us. <laughs> and then uh, we were at Stout. Shout out to Stout, I guess. And he was like, so how do you feel about like people having sex right away, basically, in dating? And I was like, I was drinking something. And I literally like choked on it. I was like, <laughs> I don't, um, <laughs> I don't, I think no, you know, <laughs> he was like, good, me too. Oh, yeah. that's really sweet. It was really sweet. And then, how uh, long did you guys date before you were like, was, had another conversation about it? Um, so it was like, it was like, so the first time he asked me out and then we went on like our first date and then it was kind of like this week, there was like a few weeks where he'd come visit me in the restaurant and mm -hmm. that's all we would do just because of schedules. He would just come visit in the restaurant and then we had the movie date. And then after that, it was like we were seeing each other every night, basically. Aww. And it was like we weren't having sex, but we were doing stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> make it all of make it out. Doing stuff, cute stuff. And, and the cute stuff. Uh, and I remember like after that conversation and then I spent the night. I wasn't planning to that night, but I did spend the night and we just like slept together. Yeah. And I remember thinking I was like, oh, I have to tell him I'm a virgin now. Because in the past, that usually was, like, when guys were like, oh, you're actually crazy and you're a virgin. Okay, bye. But, like, I was, like, I'm not, I remember thinking I'm not scared, you know? Yeah. I'm, like, not scared to to do this, to tell him. And I remember it was kind of, like, in the heat of things. And I, like, whispered. I was, like, I've never had sex before. And he was, like, okay. Cool. Yeah. He was, like, that's, that's fine. That's, that's okay. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, I think it's so important when you find someone that just accepts yeah. like your experience and doesn't yeah. really judge you for it. Yeah. And, like, that's really cool. Yeah. He was like into it. I think because I don't, sometimes we get into fights about, not fights, but just like, this is, you shouldn't, you know. But uh, he, I guess he had dated a lot of women who had been fucked over by men before. And he felt like, um, 
it was hard to like kind of, I guess, prove you're not bad or something. I feel like I'm not explaining it very well. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah no, it's difficult to it's difficult for new partners to overcome the sins of past partners. Exactly. That's exactly totally it. because yeah. it wires your brain and something that I, I've started seeing someone recently who has been a good friend for a long time. So it helps a lot. It's like he already kind of knows all my shit. Yeah. Um, but before we started dating, I had a lot of fears about what would happen Yeah, because of other people that I've dated. And so just being able to be honest with him about what I was afraid of yeah, and him just kind of accepting that made everything so much better and easier. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, I totally get that. That's yeah. really confusing. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So it was cool. We we like would do stuff. It was just really great. It felt it was like cool to like explore with someone who you knew. Because that was the thing is like before when I was I didn't date fool around with like that many other people before him. There was always like this fear that it would go too far and I wouldn't be able to raise my voice was like my fear and why I didn't experiment oh, more. Like that you wouldn't be able to say no when you wanted right. to. That's, yeah, that's a good. I mean that makes a lot of sense and I definitely get that yeah because like as a woman something happens where you you feel like i think we're socialized as women so much to please men right and to to bend to what they need from us and be whatever they need us to be right that sometimes if you know that someone wants something from you yeah. you feel obliged to give it even though you don't really have the time or the space to assess whether that's what you really want. Right. My first sexual experience, it wasn't bad, but I remember I had wanted to say no to it a lot. And it wasn't because I wanted the actual action, but I didn't want it from this person. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, it felt like I had a fever the whole time because every part of me was like, you don't want this. But I wasn't like saying no. Mm -hmm. So... How old were you when that happened? It was like before. <laughs> it was like 23. It was all in L.A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All it was in L.A. Um, so. I definitely like almost the opposite thing for me because I didn't have like the first person I, I was ever with was someone that I loved. Yeah. So and I they had been my friend for a really long time. They, You know, a while. And we ha it was like that thing where we like hung out every day. And yeah. There was a thing. And then I was like, oh my God, I love this person. Yeah. And then he was my boyfriend for a long time before he even did anything sexual. Yeah. And then like we didn't have sex for even like another year after we dated. So it was like a really slow, chill thing. And I just remember like when I – like something that I do – and have done even now is like, I like to say no the first time that someone tries anything. Like the first oh. time someone tries to kiss me, the first time anything, yeah. like it, I just, I would like, well, I wait, yeah. like hold on, I'm not ready yet. And then like, I just need time and space. And like knowing that someone respects a no of a kiss and that they're cool with it yeah, is like, okay, I feel better. Now I'm ready to kiss you. Right. But like just knowing that they're respectful of it makes me feel much safer and much better. Yeah. Because That's a it, cool thing to do. It yeah. is. It is really scary. It's it like, is. ah, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. I don't like this. Right. <laughs> a lot of times they're like bigger than you and stuff. Uh yeah, the thing, actually, I think part of Mark's short, and I feel like that actually made it better, because I'm fairly short. No, there all of like, all the boyfriends I've dated until now, I have jokes about it, is I could take them all in a fight. Yeah. Like, they're tiny. Uh, Keith Carey, I told him about it, he called them fragile twink men. <laughs> 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 Which is so accurate. It's like, they're all, like, my size and, like, skinny little dudes. Yeah. So it's like... It, it does make me feel safer. Yeah. But like now I'm dating someone that just like I feel safe because I just think he's a really good person. Yeah. Um. But this is like a new experience for right. me. Is like, oh, you can lift me. Like, that's yeah. crazy. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Oh, Look at this. Oh, call me. Are you a fireman? <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so you kind of lost your virginity to this guy. Were you, did you like date? Pretty, have you dated pretty steadily since then? Yeah. Okay. No breaks. Yeah. Cool. It's been, it'll be three years next month. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah. How do you, what kind of challenges do you guys face? Like what, like, is there something that you guys have had to overcome in terms of like 
a particular fight that you had that sticks out that you kind of solved together or hmm. what to say to the public? Uh, <laughs> it's totally okay. I will say there. I think uh, there have been for uh, for me what is important to me, especially because I was talking about how I actually avoided sex because I was afraid basically of getting raped too was part of it. It's, it's like, scary. Yeah. So to me, with this whole Me Too movement, it's really important to me that my partner understands it and is behind it. Like, oh, yeah. Me too. So he he's like, he's behind it, but sometimes, and he is a good guy. I don't want him to come off saying like a bad guy, but I feel like I've had to really break down the importance of it and his role in it. I'm like, you own a studio in Hollywood. You create opportunities for people. It's important to me. You understand your power. So not those aren't it's like it's not fights because it's not like anything we do to each other. But he it's like well, it's really a, like I need you to understand. This. It's an education of to him of an experience that you don't yeah. have. Yeah, I think I think of it really similarly is like I've dated a lot of people that aren't white in the past. Yeah. And they've had to kind of educate me about like their experience in the world and it's something right. I forget so like the my first the first boyfriend that I had that was Mexican I remember he told me he's like yeah uh cops will just stop me all the time they'll run my license plate because and then they'll see a Hispanic name and they will just pull me over yeah and that's a thing that'll happen to me yeah. all the time yeah. and I was like whoa what and then I realized like all those experiences kind of like made me afraid for them and care about them in a different way yeah and I think as women we constantly have to educate our partners about what it's like right. for to be our in our experience yeah because they really don't understand yeah like when we were started dating there was a, a Bill Cosby album on the wall and it had been after Cosby was outed and he was kind of like, well, you know, I enjoyed his work basically. Yeah. And then I was telling him like, every time you say I believe him, you're telling her, I don't believe you. Totally. Yeah, totally. I think there is this thing with men and I, understand where they're coming from because yeah. this experience isn't as harsh to them. Right. But I, 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 uh, I kind of compared it to my boyfriend the other day of like crossing a picket line. Yeah. It's like as women, we can't do that. We can't go do the show of someone who's an accused right. rapist. We can't. Yeah. Because if I do that, I'm legitimizing them. Yeah. And if you do that, you're legitimizing them. Yeah. And you might not feel as loyal because you don't have the fear of that experience happening to you. Yeah. So you don't really understand what it means to say no to someone who's a rapist. Right. Yeah. Whereas like for me, like having been creeped out by enough dudes, I'm right. like, no, I don't want to support this person. Yeah. I don't like it. So it's like, we kind of have to, we don't right. have a choice. Yeah. We can't be like, Oh, I'll just go do their show. Yeah. Like it's not a choice because yeah. it's like, even if, like, A, not only am I putting myself at risk, but I'm also legi legitimizing someone that could put other women at risk. Right. Because, like, women take cues from other women right. about whether or not a dude is a good guy. It's true, yeah. So, like, we have to kind of do that stuff to protect each other. Yeah, I also find, I'm really enjoying, uh, I know Pulavi was, did I say it right? Pulavi. Pulavi. Pulavi was yeah, at yeah, yeah. the, were you at Marcel's forum? No, I wasn't able to go. It was too early. Yeah, it was really early. I had to, like, get off work early. Um, it was cool to be there and feel this kind of strength in sisterhood. Like, I feel like there is, a like, a sisterhood. But I feel like that word kind of is like, well, we're not, like, sissies. But, like, there's getting, there's, like, a strength in the sisterhood. And I feel now, I think that's really cool. I, I feel like I'm losing words about it. But I think that's cool that there is a strength and that I feel like men are beginning to be held accountable. I, Me and my friend went to Arizona and this like female comic basically was like, she just kind of started confessing to us the things that guys have done to her down in that scene. Yikes. And we were like, I was, my first thing I said, I didn't, I don't even know if it was very helpful, but I was like, well, in LA, the women are really fierce and we stick together and yeah. we like chase them out. Yeah. We have to. It's yeah. hard. It's harder in this scene, I think, because the scene is big enough for those people to persist. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah. And that and they're also be... connected to like the real money and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some of the guys definitely are. It's yeah. really shitty. Um, 
I'm sorry. I know we're kind of like. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's totally fine. Uh, this is like, this is just something that weighs so heavy on my mind. Like, I'm glad that we got a chance to talk about it. Yeah. But like, has your boyfriend kind of like. He's definitely changed. And there was kind of, there was like this incident where basically um, there was this incident where he has this like really young, pretty client. And I, you know, she's great. And there was like this other incident where an older client wanted Mark to like ask her out hit her out to him for him basically like be matchmaker that's really weird and it really enraged me because I was like basically what you're doing is like because Mark didn't understand he was like what he's into her yeah Yeah. he's into her it's fine I was like yeah but what if she doesn't come back because she's worried that you're his friend and you'll be on his side about it or something or something happens yeah and now your space is compromised into how he feels and she's worried about you know what I mean? Yeah. Then that safe isn't that it's space isn't a safe, safe space, space for her. Yeah. I was like, just let her come and do her work. He's a fucking adult man. He can ask her out himself. Right. Like, don't get involved in this. Yeah. And that was like a big fight. Uh, not like a big fight, but he was like, why are you so mad about this? It's not even about us, basically. And I was like, it is about us. <laughs> so, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. And I, I think it is really hard. And it's something that I struggle with because, like, even dudes that are my friends, yeah, that I'm like, I know that they're good people, and I yeah. know that they wouldn't hurt women, yeah, but they don't understand why you don't want to do a rapist show, right? You know, yeah. like they're just like, put a stitch to I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really difficult, and uh, it's also like, I don't like. I personally. I mean, it's not like they're going to, but I don't really like, the, I don't make a point to go to the store. I don't like it. Uh, I feel overwhelmed, you know? I just feel like people think there's like, there's so much stage, there's only like a little stage time. It's like, there's a lot of stage time. There's so much stage time. You can time go in this anywhere town. and get yeah. stage time. Totally. And like, I've had really great shows and opportunities, and I didn't like go around a rapist way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've had cool opportunities, and I just like kept going and like no they're like small in the scheme of things but i'm like really proud of them because they just like ha- you know what i mean yeah like, you're just on, happened you're yeah. on the put your hands together yeah recently. it was super cool yeah thank you and like and really that happened because of marcella's show okay marcella put me on her show and they saw me there that's great yeah so it's just like Stop Stop worrying about where they go and do their stage time and that that's the only stage because it's really not, you know? Totally. Yeah. That's uh, that's a really good way to be a person, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> because I do so think true. people are like, oh, well, I have to do this, and this person controls that. And, like, it definitely, all of the sexual assault stuff has made me anxious. Yeah. Um, there's a mic that I hosted, I guest host for someone sometimes at Echoes, and there's a dude that comes there that just, like, he makes me super uncomfortable and I don't like him. And that's not really my space. Yeah. And I don't have control over that space. That's not my mic. I don't have control over yeah. that mic. But the only thing I do is when he goes up, I don't announce his name. I make someone else do it. Yeah. And I don't shake his hand and I right. don't talk to him at all. Yeah. But just having him in that space makes me super uncomfortable. Right. Because it's like, I don't really have the power or the authority to ban you from this place. Right. But I don't want to support you or anything that you right. do. So it's just like... I don't know. It just makes me anxious every time. It is, it's all very anxious. And even like in the forums, you know, they've started to not name names in like the secret forums and stuff. Yeah. Because a protection of really the women again. Totally. So it's even hard because it's like, well, who is, th- who are these people? You know, totally. And it's like, that's what makes it so say, difficult you know? is yeah. like to, to protect women from retaliation you don't want to name who they are yeah and you don't want to give too many details you just want to be like this person's bad yeah and then it's like well then how am i supposed to believe that like what if it's just you know it's just it's overwhelming and confusing it is it really is yeah that's why i don't just somebody came up with an idea of like a gmail system i don't know communication there's a lot of that yeah yeah there's so many but it's hard to, <laughs> that wasn't a good response but i don't it is it's really hard book more women because they tend to they tend to not, not rape people not rape. Yay. yeah i like it yeah um let's go back to love momentarily <laughs> 
<laughs> this got real sad. We're yeah. just like, oh, sexual assault. I actually have another uh, person coming in here, and we're only going to talk about sexual assault oh. by TV executives. Fun. Or, you know, by industry executives, yeah. I should say. And I was like, okay, that's going to be a rough one. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Damn. Oh, man. Um, but so you and your boyfriend have been dating for three years. Yeah. You like him. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. What's uh? What's like something when you when you got together and when you first kind of like started falling in love with him maybe even after you had sex like what are some of the fears that you had about your relationship and what are ways that you guys kind of like talked through them or fears Mm. or did you not have any did you feel super confident honestly we're just kind of in this place where we're we don't talk about the future a lot. Okay. And it's really like, date. we're very like present and like, we're both so focused on like, like we're, we're together, but we're also very independent mm-hmm. and we, um, so it's like, it's like we're separate, but we're together. So it doesn't feel scary because it's like all of my fears, I guess, are still like kind of like career wise or stuff like that. So it's kind of nice just to go home to have someone to talk to. A partner. At the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't feel pressured by you or any of the choices that you make or vice versa. Like, you don't feel pressured to there conform. Has been, there has been talks about, like, if I travel more. Because he really doesn't enjoy traveling that much. He's gone with me because I'll be like, I don't want to be alone at this comedy festival. I need you as, like, a human bodyguard. <laughs> and so uh, he's done that and he's gone with me and it's fine. Uh, but, you know, if... He wouldn't. He wouldn't want to be on the road or anything. Oh like yeah, that. no. Yeah. That's a lot to ask of someone. Yeah, it's a whole change in lifestyle. Yeah. So we've talked kind of like if someone's career blows up in a way that's like different or more difficult, but it's usually just like we'll take it when it happens. That's we'll worry really about cool. it when it happens. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that would probably be the fear if if someone had to move or something like that. Okay. But um, yeah. So far, it's been pretty great. I was going to say something, but I totally forgot. Something about that. But I will say, I feel like what makes it so great is that we we liked ourselves when we met. You know what I mean? That's like really that, awesome. Yeah. that I And was, rare. I was like, <laughs> like, I was like in this shitty kind of existence, but I was like, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I have a job, and I'm happy. I remember when he asked me, to be exclusive with him, I was like, well, I just kind of cleaned all this shit up. Like, I just got everything where I want it, and I'm not looking to ruin it. And he's like, I'm not looking to fuck shit up. And so I was, like, happy that that was what started it. Not like, I need you, but it was like, don't fuck up what I got going on. Look, I'm happy, (laughs) so take it easy. Take it easy, you know? Like, no drama, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. That's really positive. Do you want to, I think we're going to kind of wrap up. Yeah. Um, do you want to end the podcast by telling us something that you love about your boyfriend? Um, he gen, he like, will he'll see someone who I would probably write off as very socially awkward and he'll connect immediately with that person and just like ask them about their day. And like it, you can tell it like makes that person feel good that someone like noticed them and started talking to them. Aw. Yeah. He's a conversational good Samaritan. Like, he, like, has this little light about him, and I feel like he just kind of, like, shines it on people, and people are like, thank you for shining it on Aww, me. Aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he smiles a lot. Like, the other day, he woke up smiling, and I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> He's like, I had a dream where I was hanging out with my friends, and Aww. he was, like, happy about it what a tender soul yeah he's really sweet yeah that's really beautiful yeah thank you so much for coming on thank here. you for having me do you want to tell people like where they can find your podcast and you also can find it on podbean you guys <laughs> fucking podbean it's on lost it's called lost it's on podbean and where can they follow you on social media social it's karina Assad on facebook for the love of fucking christ and it's Assad kadi k-a-r-i rocks on Instagram and at Kadi Asad on Twitter because I haven't got
gotten that shit together yet. So. <laughs> totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, mine's all sundress comics. So. Yeah. See, yeah. that's very smart. Very it's, easy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no one can spell. There's like, how many Z's? What's a T? I'm like, yeah, What's it's sundress tea? comic. It's sundress comic. Uh, yeah, hey guys, if you really like this podcast, uh, you can email me at andrealoveseverybody at gmail.com. Um, go ahead and please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. And when we get to 50 reviews, I'm going to pick a winner from the 50 people that reviewed it. And everyone, or and someone, not everyone, sorry, I don't have that kind of time. But someone <laughs> will get a custom illustration, just like I do yeah, for the guests each week. They're really good illustrations. Yeah, they're really fun. Um and uh, follow me at the things on Sundress Comic. I can't say it any more times. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.